What's up guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are starting the underdrive pulley install on the Corvette. Now it is a 25% reduction pulley, so that should help with getting it up in the RPMs much faster, all that. I just want as much throttle response as possible with this. And we might free up a little bit of horsepower. So I actually came in the other night and I started tearing it down. I didn't get an intro, that's where we're at right now. So I decided I'd get an intro. I'll go ahead and play you guys up to where we're at right now and then we'll go from there. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I'm gonna try and give you a look at what I'm talking about with the wobbling pulley. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can definitely feel it. Before we start tearing into it, I wanted to make sure to remind you guys, make sure your steering wheel is nice and straight. Obviously, make sure the wheels and tires are straight before you go ahead and remove that bolt down there, the 11 millimeter that's holding the steering shaft on. You guys can kind of see it down there. But yeah, just want to remind you guys, make sure all of that's straight because you don't want to mess that up when you go to reinstall it. Okay, steering shaft is separated. Um, wasn't too bad. It, was, it wasn't fun, but it wasn't too bad to get down in there. Um, once you get it loose, I did take a pry bar and then went ahead and then pulled the steering shaft off of it. It is a lot easier, I bet, if you guys had someone here to hold the wheel. I just went ahead and pressed my knee against the tire and then just went ahead and used that to keep it stationary. Now we're just going to get the wheels and tires off, then we can get to pulling the tie rod ends off. Alright, should be good enough angle for you guys. A little concerning how loose that was. Once it's loose, just go ahead and take a hammer. Leave the nut on the top. Give her a good whack. And by a whack, I mean a couple. Bam. And now we're gonna remove the sway bar. It's two 13 millimeter bolts right here, and then two more over here on the other side. Once you've got those removed, just go ahead and pull down on the sway bar. Almost get hit in the face. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the ABS brackets. These two right here, these are 13 millimeters as well. We're just gonna go, let, go ahead and let that hang out right there. I can't get the best angle on the camera, but you will need to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts right here that are holding the cooler lines in. And then we can get to removing the rack. So we've just got two of the cooler lines left. I'm trying to get in here real quick. So we got right here, this top one. And then there's another one right next to it. And what I'll be using to get it out will be this Crowfoot. It's an 18. I definitely recommend getting one of these. It'll be a lot easier to get to. Let's see if this is going to work with the camera here. And it drops on just like that. Unfortunately, with the camera on the way, I wasn't able to show you guys uh, breaking it free, but it actually went really well. Uh, with that cross foot on there and the wrench, I got enough torque on it and broke it uh, free. Now you can use your regular 18 to get it off. Um, I just recommend using the cross foot so you don't round any of those edges because that'd be kind of a pain having to replace that whole line. Just because you rounded the fitting. Got that line out. Wasn't too bad at all. Now you just need to get this sick. I can't quite... It's right back there. There's a second one right there that you're going to need to do the same thing with. Also, make sure you guys have a pan ready to go because this will leak everywhere. So just make sure you got a pan or something. Thankfully, the foreigner is really good at leaking. Sorry, I had a pan ready. And then I'm just going to take like a plastic bag or something and wrap that up when we go back under there. Next, we just need to remove that plug right there. And then we can get to removing the actual rack. So I lied. You're going to have one more clip that you're going to have to remove. Uh, it holds the cooler line onto the rack itself. Just go ahead and loosen that up and it'll pop. Oh, drop your phone. The first bolt I'm going to go for is on the driver's side. Right here, you're going to take your 18 millimeter, set it right there. Come over to this side, and you're going to take your deep socket 18, get right up there on that bolt, and now I'm going to hold it from the other side and then hit it with the ratchet. And then the bolt will just pull right out the back. Now I did have to lift up on the steering rack just a little bit to get the threads uncaught. 
but she comes right out. And over here on the passenger side, you're just gonna do the same thing. Uh, that nut right there. And that bolt right there. Then I just need to figure out which is gonna be easiest, removing it from the passenger side or trying to pull it out the driver's side. Steering rack is completely loose. I was trying to move it over to the passenger side a little bit, trying to get it up. But every time I went to lift it, I'll show you guys when we get underneath, uh, it kept running into the power steering pulley right here. I know it's kind of dark, but kept running right into that. So as you guys can see, it would just turn right up into it. And I really don't want to pull it this way because I don't want to uh, run into all those brake lines right there. I'm sure we could push them to the side and then uh, drop the cradle a bit. But I don't know if I want to do that. So what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and just remove the alternator and then move the power steering bracket um, just so that we can get the steering rack up and then hopefully as far to the left as possible or just out completely. Okay, I got the alternator up and out of the way. It was just two 15 millimeter bolts, one down here and one right up here and it comes right out. Just make sure you guys disconnect the cables. Um, now to the reservoir, I've got a 15 millimeter right there. And then got another one right here on the back side. Make sure you get that one and then you can go ahead and remove the reservoir, put it off to the side. I haven't got these out all the way, obviously. I just want to make sure and show you guys. And then there's one more right there that we need to get to and then we can get the assembly off and then hopefully get it some, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Hopefully we can get it up and out of the way. So I lied and unfortunately there's another bolt. All right, so there's the one I was pointing out initially and then we got another one back here. So I already loosened it as you guys can see. Also, I did remove the reservoir. I've got it over here. I definitely recommend removing the reservoir when you go to do this because you're not going to be able to get a wrench in there very well at all. So that's about the only way I could get a wrench without rounding the bolt from the other side. And that made life a lot easier moving this bracket. Um, unfortunately, I did not record it. Um, I just got it loose, kind of moved it up to the side and uh, realized I was able to get the top of the steering rack. So I just went ahead and pulled it to the front as you guys can see right there. Now, like I said, I apologize I didn't record it. I just kind of lifted this up and then got up underneath and pulled it over and it worked out great i didn't want to miss my only shot if that was my only shot so just telling you guys how i did it now we just need to get the rest of the rack all the way to the passenger side i did spill some power steering fluid not that big a deal didn't have the pan ready but i'll clean it up BAM! It's out. Okay, so not entirely out, but as out as it's gonna get. And sorry for that last clip. I didn't turn the mic on. I'm pretty good at that. So I lose a lot of footage. But, as you guys can see, hang on. You can see it's far enough out of the way that I can get a clean shot to the crank pulley right there. I mean, we've got the tie rod in, kind of in the way a little bit, but we can kind of move that. It's no big deal. A lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I've just got the bracket over there being held on by a bungee cord and then I've got the steering rack held on by a bungee cord over here so it doesn't fall. Um, I took the ABS sensor out just in case I didn't want it to break that, anything stupid to happen. But yeah, you guys don't have to remove it completely. Okay, now we can get to actually removing the crank bolt. Um, now I don't have a breaker bar but I've got the end to my floor jack and I've got a 24 millimeter socket. Uh, before you start, make sure the car is in sixth gear and you have the e-brake on. If you have it in first gear, it's just gonna like slowly turn the tires. Oh. Oh, I broke it free, but I also broke this line. Yay! So that was both a win and a fail. Uh, I got the crank bolt free. It broke loose, but I also ended up breaking uh, this cooler line right here, this T-fitting. 
But these are garbage anyway. They're plastic from factory. Why they continue to run plastic on this kind of stuff, I don't know why, especially on the coolant lines. But I was going to upgrade it to a brass one anyway. So I'm going to get this up and out of the way for now because I wasn't quite ready to start on the radiator. Um, yeah. I do have the radiator over here with the hoses ready to go, but I just wanted to see if I could go ahead and get this out without removing all that because I'm sure most of you guys aren't going to be removing your radiator and all that. Crank bolt is out. Uh, it wasn't too bad after breaking free. I got underneath, uh, got underneath the car. It was a lot easier to get to and then just got, uh, just unscrewed it the rest of the way with my hands. Um, now we move on to the puller right here. This is my balancer pulley that I've got. Um, I used it on the Silverado engine when we did the cam swap. Uh, it's just a Harbor Freight special. Uh, I grabbed a three pack. Uh, this is the smallest one. Let's see if we can get you guys a shot real quick. Yay! Let's see if we can go ahead and hit the everything on the way out. <laughs> okay. Ooh, got it out. Now when you guys go to do this, make sure you remove the <laughs> the AC pulley or the AC belt. I totally forgot. Okay, so I'm not sure how I left the AC belt on, but yep, that's the thing. Uh, go ahead and make sure you remove that first. Uh, if not, no big deal. Obviously, it just makes a little bit more of a struggle to get the pulley out. But I did notice that it is the factory GM one, so that's pretty neat. Okay, we got it up in better light, but yeah, this thing is pretty wrecked. What I did notice is over here where it's getting all smashed up, that it's actually pushed a little bit more over to this side. The inner's starting to push out, and this side's getting expanded. So that's where you'll get that wobble when that starts to happen. Yeah, she's super crusty. <clears throat> but we got the new Romac that I actually ordered from Texas Speed, got here super quick. This thing is awesome. She is super pretty. And there's a, wow, there is. You can tell the size difference right here between the underdrive, the 25% reduction pulley and the stock one. I cannot wait to get this bad boy on. To install it, I'm gonna be using this uh, balancer pulley install kit. Um, I mean, it's literally just a chunk of all thread a bolt and two washers so nothing too complex uh, I can't remember where I got it all the sizes and all that but I'll put the link in the description below and you guys can go from there but yeah I'm just gonna load this into the crank that goes in like then the pulley will go over it drop the big washer in Put the smaller washer on the outside and then just tighten her in and it'll suck right up onto the crank. One last thing that I forgot to mention, uh, the pulley does have a notch in it. Um, I, the crank is not pinned from factory, so most LS engines, as far as I know, all LS engines, they do not have a pin in them. Unless it's probably the ZR1, I'm sure they've got one. But long story short, um, I am not putting a pin in it right now. Uh, I will not worry about that until the future. So what I am going to do is take some RTV and just kind of fill that up a little bit. Just to prevent any kind of oil leaks. And then always make sure you put the seal on the back side. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that I don't think you'll have any issues, but I'm going to seal it just in case. There she is. Got her installed. Now, <laughs> apparently I forgot to hit the record button on the actual install, but it went fine. Um, if you are running the stock bolt, I will tell you to uh, take the old one, run it to 250 foot pounds, back it out, and then install the new one. Do uh, 37 foot pounds, I believe I did. And then what you're going to want to do is take it 140 degrees because uh, it's a yield of torque, unfortunately. A lot of people just get them on there and then just crank it down and call it good. For those of you wondering what belts to run uh, when you get the underdrive pulley, here's some part numbers for you. Uh, unfortunately, they're Master Pro. Uh, <laughs> Texas Speed sold me these with the kit, so they should be good enough. Uh, as far as I know, Master Pro is just like some O'Reilly's cheap stuff. But Texas Speed gave it to me. It's got to be decent. So here's your guys' part numbers right there. Should be good to go. 
All right guys, so I did forget to mention that when you go ahead and do the pulley, you might as well replace the timing cover seal, the one that goes on the front. Um, unfortunately, I already explained this when we were underneath, but it wasn't recording. I didn't replace the one on this right now because we're just gonna be getting back in there later this year to do the cam swap. So yes, I do get to go through all this fun again later on. But I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right now. I'm gonna get the steering rack back in, um, get most of the steering connect uh, back connected, but leave some of that stuff disassembled because I'm gonna go ahead and replace the water pump and get the new radiator, all that in, but that'll be on the next video. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right now. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it wasn't too bad. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, please comment below. Thank you so much for the support and hope you guys have a great night.